Greetings. Greetings to all the parents, teachers, and tactile images friends. We thank all those who believe in our mission to provide children with disabilities easy access to education. Thank you for your support and care, and we believe that only together we will be able to build an inclusive world. My name is Gabriel Victor Bukla, and I am the project manager of the Urban Development Association, an NGO that for more than 10 years has had the mission to offer children with disabilities easy access to education through the Tactile Images educational platform. Here you will find the library with over 1,500 tactile drawings, also the image creator platform where anyone can create interactive drawings about which we spoke in the previous webinar. Also, here you will find the mobile application that transform a tactile drawing into an interactive one, but also a new type of wood glue based printer of which we will talk about in the next webinar. Along with me are my colleagues, Paola, Maria and Dan, the co-presenters of this webinar, whom I ask to introduce themselves. Paola. Hello, everyone. I am Paola. I'm the communication specialist of the NGO, and I write emails to donors, social media content, blog articles, and many other materials. Hi, I'm Maria, and I'm in charge of the visual side. I create uh, tactile graphics, I record videos, and I create illustrations. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm the founder of Urban Development Association, and I firmly believe in this method of creating tactile graphics. It's an easy way that you can produce at home a very large number of tactile graphics. Thank you, Gabi. Thank you, Dan. Now, here comes the question. Why are we doing this webinar? First, we noticed that there is a need for special information. Children need to know what the objects around them look like and understand the abstract concepts. Then we came across a stronger barrier to meeting this need, the high costs. Tactile teaching materials are very expensive. Therefore, one of the solutions we have identified is manual embossing through wood glue and organic materials. Hence, the purpose of our meeting today is to share with you the manual embossing methods and techniques that we have been using for over than 10 years in order to succeed in creating easier and cheaper educational materials for children in need. That being said, I suggest to start the presentation and I ask my colleague Paula to tell us the content of this webinar. Paula. Thank you. So let's see what we will be talking about today. First, we will discover our necessary materials. We will talk about properties, prices. Then we will start planning the drawing. We will find out how to create a sketch. Next, we will start embossing with wood glue. We will start by mixing colors. We will make some dexterity exercises, and then we will give you some embossing examples. Next, we will emboss with organic materials, and at the end, we will talk about the next steps. Thank you, Paola. Now I propose to move on and uh, to go to my colleague, Dan, whom we will speak about the embossing materials and uh, from where we can buy these materials. Dan? Thank you, Gabi. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I believe uh, strongly in this method of embossing because it's something that requires minimum uh, accessories, minimum tools, and minimum uh, skills. And that's because you just have to use a syringe uh, as a pen and follow a contour. I mean, uh, the difficult part is to have the drawing, to make the drawing, but just to follow the contour with a tool, with a pen or with a small bottle or with a syringe, that's very easy. And it's more important that you can do this with the tools you have at home, with uh, the wood glue you repair the chairs, with the syringe that you use to feel something and uh, at home. So uh, it's something that you have brushes. 
it uh, paints it's something that you already have at your home and as i would mention that we already tried the, this method i want to to show you a video with uh, what we did with some students from an uh, art school here in uh, Romania and it's an architecture class and uh, we've been to them and uh, tell them the story that uh, blind children need uh, embossed drawing and if they would like to help us to make as many as uh, they could and they enjoy it and this is the first time they uh, did and they understand this technique and how it easy it is to uh, follow a contour and have a, uh, the result and uh, readable tactile drawing. As you see, they use the syringe as a pen and following the contour. Now they're their first try, and this requires a little bit of dexterity, but after you make some uh, more drawings and you get some practice, then this uh, habit will come to you very easily, and you'll make a tactile drawing in five minutes or so. There are some simple rules that you can follow, Maria will tell you more about it. And uh, in the end, you'll have a inexpensive, fast uh, drawing, uh, fast obtained drawing that it's very good. It's tactile, it's flexible. It's um, a good quality and durable drawing. And now I will tell you about what we are using and what we are recommending. And this is uh, here in the upper left, we use uh, some common wood glue. It's called PVA glue, polyvinyl acetate. It's the wood glue that you use to tighten the chair, to fix the chair, or it's the wood glue that, uh, the white glue that you used uh, in uh, uh, getting together, uh, paper craft, I don't know, when you're doing some uh, art craft. Of course, you can use other kind of glue, but they don't have the property of uh, PVA glue, of wood glue. They're not uh, washable. They're not uh, uh, easy to color. You can add color to wood glue. They're not uh, easily to model after they dry and uh, they also are not flexible. So these are properties that, uh, that that's why we promote uh, PVA glue because it uh, has a list of uh, properties that we like. Um, it has a list of properties that it's important to use and it's important to have a result that it's non-toxic, it's easy to build, and it's uh, very durable. To apply this uh, thin layer of uh, glue, we use a syringe, yes, with different uh, needles, different size needles, uh, to get uh, different uh, thickness of the line, or we prefer more the small bottles. There's a, on the right, a bottle with a fixed needle or on the left, the green one, it's uh, the green tip. It's a bottle with interchangeable needles. So you can put needles uh, depending on the uh, size of the line you want to draw. As I mentioned before, you can mix PVA glue with color, with acrylic color and you can make different nuances and different shades of uh, color you want because these tactile drawings are not uh, addressable only to completely blind children, but also to visually impaired children who need color contrast to understand better the drawing. A property of PVA glue is that the one that it has, it's a water-based 
and it adheres very well to paper. So you can use any kind of paper you have, any kind of cardboard, any kind of waste you have home. You can make a nice background, a nice Canva for the tactile drawing. And of course, we use uh, what we have at home, some brushes. You don't need any kind of special brushes. So we use the brushes to clean our tools or to put a thin layer of glue that you can adhere some other kind of leather, metal, or edible ingredients from your kitchen just to have a different texture. And now I will show you how expensive is this technique. In fact, how inexpensive is this technique? We use these small plastic bottles that are coming from the electronic department. They use it for um, putting some small dosage of oil or some small dosage of adhesive on the electrical components. So there you, you will find the, the plastic bottle, the syringe and the needles. Uh, these are some uh, Romanian websites and Romanian prices, but I'm sure they're universal. I mean, you can buy a set of syringe from AliExpress. So the thing is that everything is very inexpensive or you already have it. So at a budget of $15, you can buy four liter of uh, PVA glue, a plastic bottle, some syringe tips and some acrylic colors. And with $15, you can make hundreds of tactile uh, graphics in color that are durable, flexible. It will cost you a dime and it will cost you just five minutes of your time. So this is why we promote this technique because we believe it's a very inexpensive way, a very practical way to obtain tactile images, to obtain embossed graphics for visually impaired education, and for teaching children with visual impairments um, STEM curricula. I think this is all. Thank you, Dan. I propose now to move on and to go to our colleague Maria that will present us the planning of the drawing and then about the preparation of materials needed before manual embossing. Maria. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now that we know what materials we need, we can start drawing. And when it comes to uh, creating a sketch or deciding what drawing we want to create, we have a few options. So first of all, we can simply draw by hand on paper. We can do that on any type of paper with any instruments, pen, pencil, anything works. And then when we're done, we can apply the PVA glue on top of that. Another option would be to create the drawing in our image creator module, the one that we presented in our previous webinar. And there we can uh, either use clip art to create certain images, or we can uh, use the module's functions to create our own page, our own drawing. Now, another option, if we don't have the drawing skills that might be needed for creating our own drawing, we can just browse uh, our own library, the one that you can find at uh, tactileimages.org. Uh, there we have over 1,500 drawings that are already created and they're ready to be embossed. As you can see, we have a multitude of categories that you can browse through. And when you find a drawing that you want to print, you simply download it, print it, and then you're done. You can start embossing. Now, another option uh, would be just to simply Google it. As you can see here, we Googled an image of a puppy. And you can use any, any image you might find here and then... Um, print it and uh, draw its outline using PVA glue. Now, if you already have a drawing that you want to emboss, uh, let's say you have a drawing in your textbook or something that you want to teach your children, um, you can use a window to duplicate that image as I'm going to show you in this video. So you take the drawing that you already have, place it on a window and then place a blank paper on top of it. And then you just draw the outline. 
You can do this as many times as you want, duplicate the drawing as many, as many times as you need. And then when you are done, you can uh, just start embossing it. Okay, so now we can move on to actually embossing our drawing. So now before we start, I'm going to do a short recap of the materials that we might need and the ones that we use. So as you can see, we use different uh, types of syringes of different uh, dimensions, also the plastic container that we showed earlier, different types of needles of different thicknesses that help us create all sorts of lines, acrylic paint if we want to add some color to our material, brushes for mixing and for cleaning our instruments, and PVA glue. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you can mix your PVA glue with acrylic paint to add color to your drawing. And uh, I'm going to show you, show you how, how I do that. Now I am mixing the paint and the PVA glue in my plastic container. You can do that in any type of container, let's say. Uh, and I'm simply adding the PVA glue and the acrylic paint all together in here, and I'm mixing it with a brush. And we mix that until we are pleased with our color, our consistency. Maria, please uh, tell us, how do you mix the glue and the color inside the syringe? Uh, well, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, at first, I uh, fill up the syringe with PVA glue, and then I remove the white part at its end and add the paint through that uh, hole. And then I just mix them with a brush, the same way that I did here. So it's quite similar. Now I'm going to move on to some dexterity exercises. So um, for these exercises, we prepared five pages containing different types of lines and letters and things like that. This one starts off with a set of um, lines and dots. Now for these lines, uh, at first we squeeze, uh, squeeze the instrument when we start drawing the line and near the end we re release it so that we can control how much PVA glue uh, exits the, the needle. For the dots, it's a lot more simple. We just hold the instrument perpendicular on the paper and we squeeze, squeeze once. And for the bigger dots, it's pretty much the same thing. We just um, repeat the motion a few more times until we fill up the, uh, the whole surface. Moving on to the zigzag lines, uh, the ones that don't have a sharp, uh, sharp angle are quite easy to, to draw. We just draw a continuous line. This way uh, we can draw a perfect angle, a perfect line. Now the situation changes a little bit when the angle is a lot more sharp. And I'm going to show you that in the next images. Uh, for the line that has a sharper angle, we have to draw the line starting from opposite points, connecting them at the tip. So as you can see here, I'm not drawing a continuous line. I'm uh, stopping each time and drawing it from the opposite side so that I can maintain that sharp uh, tip. Now, the wavy lines are a lot easier to draw. We just draw a continuous line like we did before. And we can stop at any point and start drawing again. The stopping point will not be visible at all. Moving on to the second page containing exercises. Here we have a set of lines of different thicknesses. And for the first one, the thickest line, I'm moving slower, uh, squeezing the instrument harder so that I can let more glue come out. For the second line, the one that is a bit more, a bit thinner, I'm moving a bit faster. And you can already see a difference. And for the last two ones, I'm going to change the type of needle that we are using. So you can see that here I'm using a different needle and the line is thinner. And for the last one, I'm going to change it to an even thinner uh, needle. With this type of needle, we have to be a bit more patient. As you can see, the glue comes out a lot slower and we have to push harder. Maria, is we should draw the lines with different uh, thickness? Uh, yeah, well, it's important because we can 
use them in different situations. So for example, we can use thicker lines to draw an object's outline. And then we use thinner lines to draw the, the details that we can find inside of it. So in that way, uh, kind of becomes a lot more clear to the person that's reading the drawing um, what's on the inside and what's on the outside. Now um, on this page, I also added a line that is composed out of um, 19 degree angles. And for this one, we draw the same way that we did before for the sharp angles. We start from opposite points. And for the swirly lines, we simply draw freely, keeping our hand above the paper without touching it. And now we can move on to the third page. This one contains capital letters. Uh, now this page is useful to us as an exercise, as well as to the kids, helping them kind of um, understand what our letters look like. Now, as you can see, these ones are composed out of simple uh, straight lines uh, and they're pretty easy to draw. We can also move the glue around if we are not pleased with, with its placement. Maria, why do you emboss uh, normal Latin letters? Well, they are both an exercise for us and um, something useful for the kids. Because these drawings are a multisensorial experience, uh, they can be used by both um, visually impaired children or children with learning disabilities um, because they help them uh, perceive Roman letters, um, understand how they look, let's say. And now moving on to the next page. Um, here we have the small letters. These ones are a little bit more complicated to draw, but they are also uh, a great exercise and useful for us and for the kids as well. Now on this page, I only have uh, a minor detail to mention. So for letters such as F um, and X, T, letters that have uh, lines that overlap, we're not going to draw them overlapping when, uh, in PVA glue. We're going to draw the vertical line and then two separate lines um, in each side, as you can see how I, how I did there. Maria, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Can we use this technique to emboss braille letters as well? Uh, yes, of course we can. The only thing would be that we need a really thin needle so that you can create the dots at the perfect size. And we would recommend printing our text first so that we know at what size to draw them. Uh, it would be a bit easier if we were to use a special stylus for braille, but we recommend uh, using PVA glue for this type of thing. It can be, it's doable. Okay. And now let's move on to the last uh, page, the last exercise that we have prepared. Now, this last one contains textures. Textures are extremely important when it comes to creating tactile graphics, tactile drawings, because it can, they can help us differentiate between uh, a few elements that we can find in a picture. And we can create uh, these textures using um, vertical lines, horizontal lines, lines that are symmetrical, also random lines, as you can see here. And uh, the same thing with overlapping lines applies here. As you can see, uh, I'm drawing a main line. And then uh, beside that, I'm drawing two separate lines so that I don't have too much PVA glue in only one area. Now I'm going to use a syringe as well here. As you can see, I'm filling it with uh, acrylic paint. And I'm using, it, um, I'm using a pretty thick needle. And the same thing applies here when we're, when we're working with a syringe, we try to avoid overlapping lines. For the dots, it's pretty much the same thing like we did uh, before in the exercises. And we can also use uh, diagonal lines in both directions. The important thing would be to not repeat textures um, inside a, a drawing, uh, would be to use different textures for different elements so that it's clear. clear. 
And we can also create textures using the other lines that we practiced earlier. As you can see here, I'm using zigzag lines. And I'm also using wavy lines here. In the end, I'm going to show ex an example of uh, a texture that is not that great for um, manual embossing. As you can see, this one has, has a lot more details than the ones that we used before. And we can't really emboss it using a needle. So you have to keep that in mind when you're uh, browsing and looking for drawings that you want to emboss. And now we are done with all our dexterity exercises. And we can move on to embossing a drawing. For the drawing part of our webinar, we prepared um, three types of drawings, three different difficulties. So we have an easy one, a medium, and a hard one. And let's start with the easy one. Now, the easy drawing, this, let's say the most simple one, only contains an outline and a simple detail for the ear. This one is a great, st great starting point for us, and it's a great drawing for let's say younger children, maybe even the ones that are in kindergarten, because it's really simple and really easy to understand. So for this one, we are simply drawing the outline. We can stop at any point and begin again, because the stopping point will never be visible in the final drawing. So as you can see, I'm just following the outline using the same needle throughout the whole drawing. And here I'm using the plastic container because this one has a larger capacity and the drawing, since this drawing is bigger, I need more PVA glue. Now, moving on to the second difficulty, this one also contains details. And details um, are mainly composed out of lines that we practiced earlier. So as you can see here for the eye and the color, uh, these ones can be broken down into simple dots. And again, like we did in the drawing before, we are simply following the outline. Now, um, in both this one and the drawing that I embossed before, I started from the upper left corner. And that is an important detail because we want to avoid um, touching the PVA glue, maybe messing it up with our hand. Uh, another tip for avoiding that would be to rotate our paper around so that our hand is never touching the glue. Now here we have some fur details, and these ones can be, um, we can think of them simply as sharp lines, sharp angles, like the ones we practiced earlier. And we draw them the same way we did earlier. We start from opposite points, and the lines are connecting at the tip. And this is the final drawing. Now we are ready to move on to the final one, the hardest one. As you can see, this one contains both textures and um, areas that, I that are filled with PVA glue. For the areas that are filled with glue, we simply split them into different lines or just an outline and an interior, and we fill them up. Now, since this one has more uh, details on the inside, I'm going to use different types of needles. So as you can see, for the outline, I use the thicker needle. And now for the texture and the details that are found on the inside, I'm using a thinner needle. As we mentioned earlier, we want to kind of create this distinction, distinction between the outside and the inside. Now, since I'm working on the outside again, I switch back to the thicker needle. And for the fur, the same uh, thing applies that we did earlier. It's just a sharp angle. And um, here I'm using a different texture. So for the ear, I was using diagonal lines. And for the legs, I'm using horizontal lines because these ones are different elements and we don't want a person that's reading this picture to be confused. Mm. Thank you, Maria. Very beautiful examples. And uh, uh, I, would I, uh, I would like to ask you, um, do you have some tips and tricks for us to share um, from your experience that you have uh, by drawing these beautiful uh, uh, embossing uh, uh, drawings? Sure. I have quite a few, actually. Uh, first would be the ones related to drawing, to drawing our drawing. 
Um, so now that we have all of these drawings finished, we have to dry them. And we have a few more options when it comes to that. The first method would be using a hair dryer to dry our image. And how can we do that? Well, well, it's important to keep our instrument a bit further away from the page, let's say about 30 to 50 centimeters away to avoid flattening the image or moving the PVA glue. So as you can see here, I'm holding it a bit further away from the paper. And this takes a bit of time. Now, if there are any mistakes in our drawing, we can use a um, sharp object, a um, drawing knife or just a knife to move the PVA glue around until we are pleased with the final result. And before, after that, we can go back to uh, drawing it. Now, another method would be simply placing it on our radiator uh, and waiting. So after we are done with our image, we just place it on the heater and we leave it there for a few hours until we are satisfied with the result. And moving on to the last one, the most important one and the best one, let's say, um, drawing it in, a, in an oven. And for this method, we have to simply place our drawing in a preheated oven at uh, 40 degrees Celsius, 100 Fahrenheit, uh, nothing more than that, for a maximum of five minutes until our drawing is done. Maria, tell me please, can you dry an image at room temperature? Yes, of course you can. The only thing is that uh, this method is going to take you a lot more time and um, the image will flatten a bit because the paper absorbs a part of um, the PVA glue. Okay. And related to that question, we also have another tip. We would also recommend using flour if you want to dry your uh, image at room temperature. So you can simply add flour to your mixture. The quantity depends on how much PVA glue you are using. And then you move on to creating the image like you would normally do. What this does, it stops the paper from absorbing um, the water that is find, found in the glue. And now we can move on to the tips that are related to washing our instruments. So washing is a very important part of the process. We want to uh, elongate our instrument's life as much as possible. Now for the washing, we recommend using warm water that um, removes PVA glue really easy. So for the container, I'm filling it with warm water, shaking it as many times as needed until it looks as good as new. For the needles and uh, the, um, this container's lid, I'm using a brush to clean them from the inside out. For the needle, as you can see, I'm using a brush to clean it from the inside and warm water, of course. And when we are done, I'm going to use the syringe again to blow some water through it to make sure that it's uh, completely empty, clean. And then after that, we are done. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And now I propose to move on to the last part where Dan will show us the embossing techniques using organic and inorganic materials. Dan. Thank you, Gabi. Uh, one important property of PVA glue is the fact that it's uh, water-based and it contains to it uh, contains water, so it's adhesive, and it's uh, you can use it to combine uh, things that uh, absorb water and. Because we want to obtain a multisensual uh, tactile drawing, we want to address more senses. And that's why we use a lot of things from the kitchen, a lot of things that you already have, I think. It's like cumin, like uh, cinnamon, like um, curry. So things that have smell and they have different texture and that you can put it in a thin layer on top of uh, a thin layer of glue and obtain an space, an object, an object-like, a 
a space where you can define a special texture. You just have to use a brush, a little bit of glue, and then you can add anything you have from the kitchen. This could be very well, uh, you can represent a snake skin with it, with this pumpkin seeds, or, or a fish skin, because it has the same texture. And of course, everything that it uh, uh, adheres to water also adheres to the glue. You can use rice to obtain different kind of texture or anything else you have in the kitchen. So in this example, we use poppy seed to obtain a small uh, granular texture. We use this uh, example, these squares, just to show you for this webinar, how easily you can put different texture on a piece of paper on, or on anything that adheres to PVA glue. This is the beauty of the PVA glue because you can mix it with different materials and obtain different texture. Now we use flour to obtain a silk-like texture. So you, if you have a, a zone that you want to make it very delicate, you can put flour on top. And of course, you can uh, put on top of PVA glue almost anything. Here we use some cotton strings to give a thin line, to make a thin line. And uh, when this dry, the PVA glue dry, this will be fixed to the paper and you'll have a good a string that it's fixed to the paper. You can use almost anything. What you want to obtain, what you want to transmit to your student. This is uh, pure cotton. Uh, this is a type of cardboard. Um, you can put wood, you can put metal, you can put, you know, any kind of uh, material that sticks to the glue. This is just a small sample. And now I will show you how I, with my clumsy hands, uh, make a tactile map of a park. As you see, I use the needle to um, modulate the glue. And uh, with this technique, I dry it several times because I used different type of uh, texture. So the first time I used the texture that I model with the glue, now I put some now I put some turmeric, some curry on top. And for this part of the park, I will use some rough uh, texture which is salt in my case. And with several dried, uh, if I put it uh, after each uh, stage, I dry it and at the end, you will obtain a very good flexible drawing that it took you 10 minutes to build and it's with different texture. Now let's take another example. We make a bumblebee and we will use different texture for the body, for the head. And this, uh, we will use the same cumin. And on the head, we will use, we will use poppy seed. You just make sure that you arrange it very nice. It's a process, it takes you a couple of minutes, but in the end, you will have a very nice textured drawing that it's flexible and it's made with things that you already have in your home. And now we just finish the drawing with the legs. Um, this is not our best drawing because we used the glue directly from the bottle, the glue 
come and it's not very precise. You can see it's a very big needle, but it's usable and it also very nice to touch. And this is another property, nice property of the PVA glue because it doesn't instantly dry. So you can model it. If you have made some mistakes, you can model it. So this is from my point of view. I hope I showed you how easy to um, follow a contour and uh, create some elevated lines with glue and how easy it is to fill the, the forms and the shapes with some other texture, some other texture that you have in your home. So I hope I'll show you today how easy and fast it is to achieve a tactile drawing with the things you have at home. Gabi? Thank you, Dan. Thank you for these uh, beautiful examples. And uh, before ending, I will ask my colleague Paola to tell us which are the next steps. Paola? Okay, so this webinar today was a part of a series of three webinars. Before this one, we talked about the Image Creator, the uh, software for creating interactive drawings for blind children. Now, today, it was all about manual embossing techniques. And in the next webinar, we will talk about uh, the wood glue tactile printers that we built uh, with the help of the Polytechnic University of Bucharest. Many thanks, Paola. And uh, many thanks to all who presented uh, until now. Well, this was the Manual Embossing Techniques webinar. We hope that uh, this sharing of embossing uh, methods and techniques has been helpful. We also thank to Orange Romania Foundation for supporting us in uh, realizing this webinar. If you like our cause, please support our work with any donation you may make on our tactileimages.org. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, we invite you to email us to contact aronprochivik.ro or call us at the number displayed on the screen. That being said, together with my colleagues, we thank you for watching this webinar and uh, we look forward to meet you again at the next webinar. Thank you for all. See you at the next webinar. Okay. Um, um second. Uh, here we be prepared. Uh, um,